Hello and welcome to this English lesson about friendship. Today, I picked a topic that I didn't think there would be a lot of words or phrases to talk about but there are a lot of words and phrases when you start to talk about friendship. So, friendship, this is the noun we use to describe the act of being someone's friend, okay? So, many of you have friends in life. You might have one friend. You might have many friends but the noun we use to describe this is the noun friendship. Now, I'll be honest, we don't use the word friendship a lot in casual English. Instead, we usually say that we are friends with someone, okay? So, friendship though is the noun. You can say, oh, I have a great friendship with my friend Tom. Oh, Tom and I have a a friendship that goes back years, okay? So, this is the way you describe just being uh I I just want to keep using the word friend but it's the way you describe uh liking someone, being with someone and being a good friend to them. We would call it a friendship. Um so let me talk about then the more casual way. Uh the more casual way to express this is to say that you are friends with someone. So, we use the structure to be friends. So, I am friends with a couple of people. I, Jen has some friends. So, she is friends with people as well. So, notice that we use the verb to be and we use the word friends in order to describe a friendship, okay? So, you could say that my son is friends with his friend Fred, okay? Or I could say my daughter is friends with um I I think her friend's name is Julie but I can't remember. So, this is the structure we use to describe a friendship in normal English conversation. There's a couple of things that you do with friends. One is that you spend time with them, okay? So, anytime you are with a friend, anytime you are with someone who is your friend, you would say that you are spending time with them. So, you would say things like, I really like to spend time with my friend Joe or I haven't had enough time to spend time with my friend Joe this past week or last weekend, I was able to spend some time with my friend Joe. So, We, the word spend is actually used with money as well, right? You spend money but we also use it when we talk about being with friends. Um hey, I do wanna give a shout out specifically to Brent, American English with this guy. Um Brent is also a teacher in real life like me uh and Brent and I were actually emailing back and forth this week because both of us have pre-year meetings uh and we're getting ready to teach. Um so, it was really fun for me. Brent, thank you for uh being a good email pal. That's how I would describe Brent. Uh we shared what our meetings were like. Talked a little bit about masks. I wear my mask diligently at work right now. Um anyways, enough about that. Let's move on to the next one. You also hang out with friends. So, there's a lot of ways to describe being with your friends but I think the two most common would be to say that you spend time with a friend or that you hang out with a friend, okay? Um so, I would even say this about at my age, I would even say this. I would say, you know, um I need to make some more time to hang out with my friends more. Um I'm too busy. I work too much. I don't have enough time to hang out with my friends. So, it's not just young people that hang out together. It is a very common way Uh, to talk about hanging out or being with people. I was gonna use the phrase to describe the phrase. You're not supposed to do that by the way as an English teacher. Uh you're supposed to find other words to describe it. Um there are a couple different kinds of friendships, okay? Different degrees of friendship and one is what's called a best friend. Many people have a best friend. So, they'll have two or three friends but one of those friends is just really special to them. One of those friends is someone they maybe spend more time with. They get along with that friend really well. They enjoy being with that friend and they could become best friends. Um here is a great example. When I was in kindergarten, so school in Canada goes from kindergarten up to grade 12. Um when I was in kindergarten, I made friends with somebody and that person became my best friend and he is still my best friend. Um he is a friend that I talk to quite often. Um so, a best friend is an extra special friend. That's how we would describe it. Um you might also have a childhood friend. So, the friend I just described, I could also at my age say he's an old childhood friend, okay? So, he's a childhood friend. He's a friend that I started a friendship with when I was a child, okay? Um so, many people when they go to school, 
when they go to elementary school or what we call grade school when they are young. They will make friends and then later in life they'll refer to that person as a childhood friend, okay? So, Jen has a couple childhood friends. That means that even though she's in her 40s, oh, I almost, I think I said Jen's age almost. I'm not supposed to do that. Jen is very young actually. Um she has a number of childhood friends. So, these are friends that she made when she was a child. Um another phrase you might see a lot on the internet right now is the phrase BFF. This is actually a uh, an acronym or a short form for best friends forever. It's used a lot by girls, teenage girls. So, they will say, oh, this is my BFF. So, it uses the phrase best friend but it adds the element of time indicating that this is going to be my best friend forever. Uh and they do say BFF. They'll say, oh, I'm gonna call my BFF or um can I have my uh, can my BFF come over? Um so, it's very common term and it stands for best friends forever. Um older people don't use this phrase maybe once in a while. Like I don't use BFF. Um teenage boys don't use BFF. It's very much teenage girls uh that would use this phrase. Um let me see where I am. Buddy. <laughs> so, a buddy th- this phrase is actually used a lot. I'll give you some example phrases. The reason I put a picture of a guy with a truck is because in life, it's always great if you have a buddy that has a truck. This word isn't used everywhere in North America. I'm actually curious if in Brent's area, they use the term buddy. Um but I have a couple buddies that have trucks, okay? Guys might also say, I'm gonna hand out, I'm just gonna hang out with my buddies tonight or I'm gonna go out. Uh, my buddies are coming to pick me up at eight. I'm just gonna hang out with my buddies tonight. So, it is somewhat of a male term um but honestly, the phrase, you know, it's nice to have a, everyone should have a buddy that owns a pickup truck. Um it's very common. So, I'm just gonna wait to see if Brent uh, heard me ask that question if if people in his area of Maine in the United States use the term buddy uh, very often because here it's very common um to use that term. Um a short form of buddy is bud um but it usually comes out in the form of best buds. So, again, this is another term for best friend. Um usually used with children sometimes with adults but you could say, you know, oh, they are best buds. They're best buds. Um oh, my son has a really good friend. They're best buds. They do everything together. So, best buds is just I guess a more casual way to say best friends. Um <laughs> Brett says, my brother has a pickup truck. It's a lifesaver. Yes, it's very cool, Brett. Uh we use buddy all the time. It's a great term. We use it exactly the same way. Yeah, let me back up for a sec on that, Brent because um we also some people use buddy to talk about small children like small uh, uh like small boys. They'll say like, hey, buddy, how's it going? Like when I talk to my nephew, I often call him buddy. <laughs> Sounds weird when I say it though but we do use this a little bit that way as well. Um let me get back to the right slide here. Um bestie. So, this phrase I don't hear in regular English conversation in my work even though I work with teenagers. Um I do see this word from time to time but I don't know if it's super popular in Canadian English um but bestie is another word for best friend. You know, oh, She's my bestie. Um I I don't use it. You can probably tell even when I just used it in a sentence, it did not sound natural. Um I do hear this word sometimes though. Um I do hear people use it on television shows and I hear it sometimes in movies. So, I thought I should include it. Um Brent in the chat is saying, small boys here, exact same. Maybe under the age of nine, you would call him buddy. Like, hey buddy, how was your soccer game? Or, hey buddy, good to see you. Uh do you want um me to uh come and watch your next soccer game. I don't know. I I only have one nephew so I don't use the phrase very often. Um let's see here. Let's get back uh to the slides. Um we have the phrase pal. Um again, this is not sorry, word pal. We have the word pal. This is not a word um I use very often. I don't use the word pal. Um I don't know if it's a little more American but pal is simply another word uh another word to refer to someone who is a friend. Um like let me see here. Um like my pals. I went out with my pals. Yeah, it's not a natural word for me to use but it's definitely an English word that means friend. The next word I have is kind of a word. 
um, and it's the word frenemy. So, a frenemy is kind of a funny combination of the word friend and enemy and a frenemy is someone who seems to be your friend but maybe isn't your friend. So, you might have someone you work with who is very friendly and always kind to you but then when your back is turned, they say bad things about you. So, we would say that person is a frenemy. Um it's again a newer word. I don't even know if it's in the dictionary but you will hear this word on TV shows uh and movies and things like that. So, you see the guy has like the sign on his back, kick me. So, probably his the person he thought was a friend as soon as he turned his back secretly put a sign on his back that says kick me. So, a frenemy um is not a nice friend. They are actually someone who seems like a friend but isn't. Um and we could also say that that person is two-faced. When we say that someone is two-faced in English, it means that they behave one way when they are with you but then they behave a different way when they are not with you. So, when you are with them, they might be nice and kind and say nice things about you but then when you are gone, they start to say mean things about you. So, when someone is two-faced, it's like they have two completely different personalities. So, not a very nice thing. Uh I do wanna pause and say hi to the 472 people watching. Thanks for being here. Uh there is a subscribe button there if you wanna click it. That is always a good thing to do. Um family friend or friend of the family. So, you'll have friends in life but your family might also be friends with people and you might refer to them as friends of the family or a family friend. So, here's a good example. Um down the road, there is a person who was friends with my dad when my dad was alive, okay? And he's kind of my neighbor but we usually refer to him as a friend of the family um because he was friends with my dad. He's not my friend. Like, he's not my mom's friend. He's not friends with my brothers or sisters but he was friends with my dad and he still is someone we see and talk to quite often. So, we refer to him as a friend of the family. Um this is a common phrase in English. Um you might hear people say things like um oh yeah, we're having a party this weekend. Um yeah, we have a few friends of the family are coming over. So, that just means different people who are friends with different people in your family. Um it's nice to have a friend of the family that lives just down the road um because then when I have questions about farming, I can go ask him. So, um A few not quite friend words. We'll do two of these. An acquaintance is simply someone you know. They're not someone that you necessarily go out for coffee with. They aren't someone who you see regularly and they aren't someone who you like so much and spend time with so much that you would say they're a friend but they are still someone you know. So, you would simply call them an acquaintance, you know. Oh, he's an acquaintance of mine, right? Um sometimes you have people that you meet through work Maybe you know people that work in a different place but do the same job as you and you see them every once in a while. So, they're not really your friend but you do know them a little bit. You would say that they are an acquaintance. Um a person you work with, you might be friendly with but they might not be your friend. We would say they are your colleague. So, all of the people you work with, you would refer to as colleagues. You could also refer to them as coworkers, okay? Both words work. Um so, these are people that acquaintances and colleagues aren't friends but you might do things with these people that you would do with friends. For instance, sometimes I go out to eat with my colleagues. Sometimes we go to a restaurant. Um when I go to a teacher's convention, I have a few people that I'm acquaintances with and I will I will talk to them at the teacher's convention. Um let me get to the next one here. Like two peas in a pod. So, we have a phrase in English to describe people who are very very similar to each other. This can be because they look a lot alike. Sometimes you'll see two brothers and you'll say, oh, they're like two peas in a pod or you'll say, they look identical or they look like identical twins. Um so, it can be used for physical description but it's often used as well Uh, for describing people that do a lot of the same things and like doing a lot of the same things. So, let's say maybe these two boys love playing soccer and they like wrestling and they like um running around outside and 
throwing sticks at trees. I don't know what. I'm trying to remember all the things I did when I was that age. If they like all of the same things, we might say they're like two peas in a pod. Um my best friend and I when we were teenagers really liked computers like I said and people could have said, you know, they're like two peas in a pod. All they talk about is computers. Um so, it's a way to describe physical appearance but it's also a way to describe people who do the same activities. Um a friend uh oftentimes if you stick up for someone, it means you defend them and a friend will often stick up for you, okay? So, good friends usually think the same way as you and believe the same things and if you need someone to defend you in life, a friend will stick up for you, okay? So, right now, there are many protests around the world um because people are sticking up for each other. So, when people see someone treated badly because of the color of their skin, they have this desire to stick up for them and so, we have a lot of people around the world right now sticking up for each other, showing their support. A good friend will stick up for you, okay? Um if your friends don't stick up for you, I'm not sure they're a good friend. Um and then the next one is to have someone's back. So, uh this comes originally from how people would fight. You see these two guys here have their backs to each other but you when you say that your friend has your back, it means that they agree with you. They will stick up for you. They will do what they need to do to support you when you do something. So, a good example would be Maybe you lost your job and you don't have any income. You aren't earning money. Um a good friend might have your back. A good friend might come over and say, look, I'll I'll give you 500 bucks. You don't need to pay me back. I got your back, okay? Just use the word back twice there. But when someone supports you or defends you or helps you in life, you could say that they have your back and definitely friends have your back. Um let me see here. Um We'll do this one and then I'll go back to some questions. Uh we have a little phrase in English, man's best friend and this is how we refer to dogs sometimes. Uh you'll know this if you watch the lesson on pets um that it is just a cute way to refer to dogs. We say that dogs are man's best friend um and you can see this little puppy here. He looks like he's ready to be someone's friend. So, we took the word best friend. We add the word man in front. Probably not politically correct to say man's best friend right now. Um we probably should say uh modify the phrase to say it's uh you know human's best friend but this is an older phrase that still used man's best friend. Uh pen pal. So, this is an older word but it is still used. I often encourage people who are learning English to find a pen pal. A pen pal is someone who you send letters to and they send letters back to you. Um you can also have a pen pal online. So, I actually have a pen pal right now. Uh uh, someone who I write to in French and she writes back in English and we correct each other's emails. So, a pen pal doesn't have to be someone that you send an actual letter to in an envelope with a stamp. It can be someone you correspond with online. Um so, it's a different kind of friend. Usually, a pen pal is in a different country or is far away. But it's someone who you are friends with through email or through letters. Um often when children are around age 11 or 12 in school, they might do a project where they have a pen pal in a school in a different part of North America. When I was in grade five or six, I had a pen pal in the United States and at school uh every couple of weeks, we would write letters to each other. So, pen pals are people who you write letters to. Um a fair weather friend. So, a fair weather friend is the kind of friend who is only around and only hangs out with you when life is good. And as soon as your life hits a rough patch, so a rough patch is when things aren't good or when you're sad or when things aren't going well, a fair weather friend isn't around very much. So, a fair weather friend is only around when you are happy. A fair weather friend is only around when your life is going good. Um I've had some fair weather friends in life. They can be good friends. Um they could be quite fun to hang around with. It could be quite fun to spend time with them but it is a bit disappointing when you do need help in life and you realize that a couple of your friends might be fair weather friends. That means they're only around 
when the weather of your life is good. Do you see how that phrase works? So, a fair weather friend is only around when your life is good. Basically, a play on the word weather that when the weather of your life is good, the friends will be around. Um let's see. Um what do I need to do next here? Let's do in common and then we will go to members questions. Let me get this slide a little bit better. So, I did mention this word a bit earlier because it came up in a question. Um usually when you are friends with someone, it is because you have something in common. When you say that two people have something in common, it means they share an activity or interest in life. So, these two boys are playing chess. Might be checkers. I can't actually see the pieces on the board. Um so, they have that in common. Um often friends will have um they'll play the same sport. So, they will have that in common. As I mentioned, my best friend and I both really like technology. So, we have that in common. So, when you say that people have something in common, it means that they share an interest. When you meet someone for the first time, someone who you don't know and you just have a really enjoyable time with them. Maybe you go to a dinner and one of the other guests at the dinner is just really cool. Maybe you are flying on an airplane and the person sitting beside you is just really fun to talk to. Um you would say that you are hitting it off or that you hit it off, okay? So, I would say this about um let's just say this about Brent from American English with this guy. We did not know each other um six months ago. Um But over the last few months, Brent and I have started to communicate more. We have many things in common. We are both English teachers on YouTube. We are both teachers in real life. And so, as we start to talk via email, I feel like we really are hitting it off. When you hit it off, it just means you start to enjoy talking to someone. So, again, this can happen in many situations but when you hit it off with someone, it means you just like hanging out with them. Um By the way, when COVID is over, I suggested to Brent that we we should drive and meet in the middle somewhere. I think that would be about four hours drive for me to have a coffee because it would be really fun and then if we do that like next spring or summer when COVID is over, we'll make a video for all of you. Um Bob and Brent have a coffee. That would be the really simple title. Um when you and a friend don't get along anymore, when something happens in your friendship um that makes you not want to be friends anymore, we would say that you have had a falling out, okay? So, if I said uh to my son, hey, are you still friends with Joey? He could say, no, we're not friends anymore. We had we had a falling out. Um we don't like the same things. He said something mean. We are no longer friends. So, as much as when you hit it off with someone, that might mean you are going to start a friendship at some point. When you have a falling out, it is the beginning of the end of the friendship, okay? So, if you have a falling out with a friend, it means the friendship is going to end at some point. Um let's see here. Panthera said, I'd like to have a coffee also with you guys. Best teachers on earth. Thanks, Panthera. Um I just, you know, side note, I just want COVID to be over so that when I have a cool idea, um that I can just do it but COVID has made things tricky. Even the video I did in Niagara Falls was tricky to make because I had to be so careful. Brent says, I feel the same way. I believe we've hit it off. We are cut from the same cloth. Dads, teachers and pretty chill guys. So, yes, Brent, I would agree 100%. Um let's see here. A good friend can also be someone who you describe as a shoulder to cry on. So, as we talked about how a friend will be with you Um when you have good times and a friend will be with you when you have bad times. It is nice when you are sad or when something bad happens in life if you have a shoulder to cry on. It doesn't mean you're actually going to cry but let's say you have something in your life that doesn't go well. If you call your friend and you talk for two hours on the phone, you would say that that's a good friend. It's nice to have a shoulder to cry on, okay? So, when you describe Um just someone who's available, someone who's helpful and kind when you are sad, we would just say that that is a shoulder to cry on. Um because we want oh, this girl looks really sad. Well, I hope she's feeling better now. I just I get the pictures from a website that has free pictures for teachers. So, (laughs) excuse me. You want a friend who is there through thick and thin. 
when we use the English phrase through thick and thin, it does mean good times and bad times, okay? So, you want a friend who is there um, and happy for you when you get married but you also want a friend who is there and, ha- and and helpful and kind if your marriage doesn't go well and you end up getting divorced. So, you want a friend who is available and happy and wants to hang out with you when you graduate from university but you also want a friend who is available and helpful and kind if you lose your job. So, you want your friend to be available through thick and thin. Um that's how you know a friend is a good friend. When they are there for you, when they are available through thick and thin, good times and bad times. Lolly says, I need a shoulder to cry on and Regina likes the expression through thick and thin. Yes, for sure. Uh let me see. Dave has a question from someone about audio. I've checked a couple times and it seems to be Yeah, it seems to be working well for me as well. So, Hopefully, it's working well for everybody. Um let me see here. Check where I'm at. When you and another person get along well, it's as if you speak the same language. So, we don't mean that you both speak English or you both speak Chinese or you both speak Spanish. What what we mean is that you're so similar that you it's like you speak the same language, okay? So, it's just a phrase that refers to people who have the same interests people who have a lot in common, people who are good friends and just love talking to each other, we would say that they speak the same language. So, it's just a creative way to describe people who are very similar. Um when you have a friend, it's important to keep in touch especially like what I described that as you get older and as life changes, you can forget to phone your friends every once in a while. You can forget to send them a quick text message. It is very important to keep in touch. If you have a friend that moves far in far away, when you say goodbye, you'll even say this to them. You'll say, see you. Have a great year living in Spain. Keep in touch. Like we we say that phrase all the time and what we mean by keep in touch, it means please phone me. Please email me. Please contact me via Skype uh, a a few times. So, um and this just another example talking about other YouTubers. Um oftentimes when YouTubers are talking to each other, we're very busy but we'll say, um hey, do you wanna do a video together someday? Sounds good. Well, keep in touch. Let's see if we can do that later this fall. Keep in touch. So, it just means please communicate regularly and it's especially nice when friends uh keep in touch. Um you can describe a best friend also as a close friend. So, you have normal friends that you hang out with but you might have friends that are just clo- you're just closer to them. So, physically, we use the word close to indicate that you are beside them but this really means that you are close in spirit, okay? So, a close friend again is someone you have a lot in common with. It's someone that you just really like being with. Um let me see here. Uh in the modern era, we have taken the word friend though and we've changed it a little bit and this isn't really I don't think it was cool to use the word friend but on platforms like Facebook, people want to give you send you friend requests. They want to be your friend on Facebook. They're not really I guess some of them are your real friends but some of them are actually acquaintances. So, we've used the word friend to describe a relationship on a social media platform like Facebook. So, we also have now made it a verb. So, you can say um you can accept a friend request because if someone wants to friend you on Facebook, you either have to accept the friend request or deny. So, notice I use the word friend as a verb like you can friend people online, okay? So, um I had a friend request the other day because someone wanted to friend me on Facebook and I said no. No, I didn't say no. I said yes. But you can get friend requests on platforms like Facebook. Um let's see here. Um when you don't see a friend for a long time and then when you get together, you want to catch up with them. So, you want to spend some time catching up. So, it's nice when I see friends that I had from university which is very rare by the way because we live all over the planet. Um if I do see them, it's nice to catch up with them. It's nice to share the stories of our life and to talk about what we've done since the last time we saw them. So, we often just say it's nice to catch up or hey, 
we should go out for a coffee and just catch up sometime. And that means, you know, you, you for me, it would be talking about all my kids. It would be talking about how, uh, how much I just love being married and being a dad. We would catch up and we would share little things about each other's lives. Um, Regina says, I think you sometimes we'd be, you should be careful about friend requests. Yes, very much so for sure. <laughs> there, no, Bob got straight. Yeah. I was like, denied. No. Um, let's see here. What's next? There's another version of friend called befriend. So you can befriend someone. I, I probably a good example of this would be you're on a long airplane flight and the person beside you is a really nice person to talk to. And then when you get off the plane, uh, someone says, how is your flight? You can say, oh yeah, I just befriended a person sitting beside me. Uh, we had a nice little chat. So when you befriend someone, I think it just simply means you just had a good conversation and you enjoyed each other's company just for a little bit. So you befriended them. So you were friends with them just for a little bit. Um, I use it mostly to talk about if I'm friendly with strangers on a plane or a bus or on the subway, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, the plane ride was really good. I, you know, I kind of befriended the guy in the seat beside me and we talked about all kinds of things. It was just really nice. Um, and then this word cracks me up. Uh, there's something called the friend zone. So, let me take a little time to explain this. Sometimes guys are friends with girls, okay? Some when I was in high school, this was actually rare. When I was in high school a long time ago, guys were usually friends with guys, and sometimes they had girls who were their friends. But sometimes today, guys and girls are friends. But there can be a situation where one of the two likes the other as more than a friend. That means that they want to date them. That means that they are attracted to them. And instead of just being friends, they would rather be a couple. They have a romantic interest in that person. But maybe the other person just wants to be friends. We would say the person who wants to get to know them and maybe fall in love with them is being kept in the friend zone. So, you have two people who like each other. One just wants to be friends. One would like it to be more than friends. By the way, that's another phrase you should know. More than friends means that people are dating. Um, so, the person who wants it to be more than friends is in the friend zone if the other person doesn't think the same way. So, you'll you'll hear this word sometimes on TV shows or on movies, you know. It's like, oh, I really like this girl but I'm just in the friend zone right now. Like, I really like her. How do I tell her I like her because I think I'm just in the friend zone. I think she just wants to be friends. So, this can happen quite often where two people um, uh, are thinking different things about what the relationship is. So, 